Tegu Care is incredibly comprehensive, and you definitely don't want to start behind the eight ball with these guys. So here are five things today that we're going to talk about that you should have set up prior to whatever age Tegu you are getting. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. Oh, we completely bold. Yellow Aki. to name one of my reptiles, one particular species that is the hardest to care for, it would definitely be my tegu. I've learned so much through my struggles though, and today I'm going to talk about five things that you should have ready, prepared, thoroughly researched, and it's not even enclosure design related. It could be planning something long term and understanding how you're going to go about certain elements as they age and grow and adapt and change. So let's get into it guys. But first, Patrons, I just want to let you guys know that the stickers are still being reprinted and they will be back next week. I appreciate you guys dealing with no stickers this week. Let's get right into these five guys. Number five is especially true if your Tegu is your first large reptile you're getting. Their enclosure makeup, how it's designed on the inside is very different than anything smaller. In my own reptile journey, I went from getting a bearded dragon crested gecko and some Aki monitors to getting my first large reptile, which is my Tegu. Yes, I got him as a baby, but overall it's very different to design a basking area for these guys, hide for these guys, than it is something like an Aki monitor, bearded dragon, or crested gecko. Luckily, if you get a newborn baby Tegu, you have some time before you really gotta have this thoroughly designed basking area and their hide and stuff for all that layout stuff because they're gonna be small for about a year but they can grow pretty rapidly frap got huge so quickly and you really got to think about it so let's talk about exactly what i mean so to go along with this narrative of going from smaller reptiles to an adult tegu over time that is Aki's, it was pretty simple designing their basking area bearded dragon it was pretty simple you know out of that group Aki's are probably the most detailed in terms of their basking area since they need different temperature ranges throughout and you kind of need to have various basking spots in their area and they were my only two bowl basking reptile meaning i had two basking bowls for them bearded dragon I had one, and Crescent Gecko, I didn't, and I have him at room temperature. Even with all the detail that went into the Aki Monitor's basking spots that I designed, I didn't really do much measuring, I didn't have to, and I didn't have trouble hitting my heat temperatures that I wanted to get. Heat temperatures, I don't know why I went with that phrase. With Frappuccino, my Tegu, I had to order a custom hide basking spot that would get him close enough to the bulbs to reach the proper 125 temperature I like them at as an adult Tegu. With that came having to measure the substrate depth, then I need to know how deep into the substrate I wanted to put the hide basking spot, and then that obviously led into how tall is my hide basking spot gonna be? How far do I want it from the lights They hit that proper temperature that I'm looking for? And also, I had to be concerned about the UVB. I cannot have frap too close, especially when they sit up. That's a lot of distance they close with their lights. And being that I needed a custom hide basking spot for such a large reptile to get him in range of the lights and a proper distance, I had to do that without actually being able to test it. I had to guesstimate, which means I wanted to give a little bit of a range, thus wanting to make it a little bit taller and dig it into the substrate a little bit more. There's just a lot you gotta think about. I think you guys get the point. I'm not gonna go too much further with this. It's gonna be overkill if I do. You just really need to know your UVB placement, your basketball placement, how many, and your basking hide arrangement. You get that really in place way ahead of time because you're gonna have to fiddle with it and a lot of these things that we're gonna talk about going forward, you really have to fiddle with. Also, huge shout out to Country Scales and Tails Enclosures for doing my hide basking spot. I heard a lot of you guys have went to him after seeing Frappuccino's hide basking spot. So I'll put his Facebook down in the description below if you're interested. Wow, that was a long number five to start out with. Luckily though, it speaks a lot to our number four and that's checking your humidity levels and making sure they're consistent. Like I said, there's a lot of fiddling and adjustments that you want to do prior to getting your Tegu. We talked about that with the basking hide, whatever, number five. 
and we're gonna talk about that with humidity in number four. Wanna be a pro tegu keeper? Well, get some probed base hygrometers, put them into the substrate, and you can measure the low and high end in terms of heat, high end meaning hot end. I always say high end for some reason. You can measure the humidity on both sides of the enclosure in the substrate using those, and then just get one generally for the air, one that also probably would read heat as well. Specifically, I suggest sticking one of those probes, maybe getting a third one, into the hide itself, because you want that to be a good almost 10% higher than the rest of the enclosure. That's gonna act as a little bit of a moist hide, even though tegus, they generally always have a high humidity level, they still kind of need that extra boost of humidity if they want it. My biggest tegu mistakes in the past have been humidity related. I definitely don't joke around with humidity and I don't think you should either. If you're thinking about permanently free roaming, don't do that, just, just don't. Not in my house. <laughs> in the end, what's really necessary before your tegu arrives is you can consistently count on a humidity range on the hot, see I said it right that time, and lower ends temperature wise of the enclosure in the substrate and in the air. And you know what to expect of it. And it's not gonna change on you very suddenly. One cliff note to that, just because you set it up really good before you got your tegu and good job on you for that, doesn't mean you don't stop monitoring it, especially when seasons change. Trust me, there will be a somewhat dramatic difference from summer to winter back to summer. You really need to keep an eye on it and make sure because those winter sheds, man, especially in brumation, they can be pretty rough. And as for general humidity levels that I have, on the low end of the enclosure, I like to have around the 80% range, sometimes going into the mid 70s. And then in the hide itself, like I was talking about the importance of having somewhat of a moist hide for them, it gets into the 90s. So that's overall what I aim for. Some people do go lower and in their natural habitat, there are a lot of ranges that will even dip into the 50%. So I'm not saying how I do it, the only way, there's definitely different ways, but that's how I do it. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video thus far, please consider subscribing in the lower right hand corner and hitting that bell. I am doing at least two Tegu videos a month right now. So if you're a big Tegu fan, plenty of content to come, check that lower right hand corner. Working our way to number three, we're talking about setting up a diet plan. A lot of emphasis is not put on diets as much as I would like with tegus. It's such a diverse range of food items you could give tegus and people don't really pay attention to a lot of what the tegu diet really should be. People focus too much on those phosphorus, which are your meats. You don't want to have that much meat overall in their diet, especially in captivity. You want a lot of veggies. A lot of their diet is actually even fruits. So you want to focus on those a lot. Plenty of people do their own mixes where they grind a bunch of stuff up. I personally prefer doing Repti Links because it's already ground up and put into a nice sausage-like casing for you. You can use code Professor Herb at checkout for $5 off your first purchase if you haven't tried them. But it really just comes down to perfecting the correct mixture of the wide range, like I said, of food items that you can give them. What I used to do prior to Repti Links is I would do two feedings a week as an adult, my guy's three years old now, I did this around starting at the age of two. I would do one feeding a week as just veggies and fruits and that's it. Obviously, you would put in some calcium too, but the only meat feeding would be one day a week and it would still be mixed in with those veggies and fruits and still be probably about a third portion, maybe even a fourth por portion of that overall meal that day. Connecting this all back to prepping for your tegu, you wanna have this all figured out before you even get your tegu, especially as babies, if you're getting a baby one, they have a lot larger of an invert-based diet when they're little. So that's important, you can work that into their adult years too, especially with Revdy Links, but it's primarily focused in their younger years. Number two, we're gonna talk about really what made tegus popular, is their tameability, their bondness, if you wanna put it that way, with their owners. You should probably have some sort of game plan ready for how you're gonna tame and work with your tegu and get them used to you, because if you're not doing that, then why are you getting a tegu in the first place? If you're getting a baby tegu, 
those years, or that first year, I should say, is really important for being tamed down, especially while they're small. They can be much more impressionable, and you can use elements like the bathtub method, which you might not want to use if they're a full-grown adult climbing up you to get out of the bathtub. That might hurt. I still have some scars from a video a week ago, or not scars, cuts, where I was holding Frappuccino my tegu. A lot of people also swear by putting in some dirty, stinky underwear, socks, clothes, whatever, into their hide so they get used to their scent and you put it in a safe space like their hide where they feel comfortable so they feel comfortable around you. Now I don't know how well that works. I did it and perhaps tame down as ever but who knows. And if you're wanting to try more advanced taming methods like clicker training or even potty training them which is definitely possible with tegus, you probably want to plan that out and understand how you go about doing that type of taming before you even get your tegu so you know from the start how to go along with that process. So yeah, number two, probably not as important as five, four, or three, but definitely something you should keep in your head and keep in mind because this is the whole reason we get our tegus. All right guys, and bear with me at number one. We're gonna talk about getting a leash and harness for your tegu. Now you might be thinking, am I getting a dog? Well, it kind of is the puppy of the reptile world, some people would say, but you really might wanna consider this. I take Frappuccino outside all the time and put him on a harness and a leash. He is very trustworthy, but you know, these guys, they are a lot faster than they might sometimes appear to be. Trust me, look on YouTube for some crazy wild tegu videos. All reptiles enjoy the natural sunlight much more than whatever UVB, synthetic UVB can provide. So if you could take them outside, and obviously you would want them on some sort of leash and harness, I would do that. And it's also important when you have a larger reptile, if you can't give it a huge enclosure, which usually requires being able to do outdoors at least most of the year, that you give some extra free roam time, especially in the warmer months, outdoors or just for them to kind of stretch out a bit. So yeah, this might be a silly number one, I guess, but it's actually important and I really want you to think about it. Getting larger reptiles outdoors is much more feasible and actually one of the benefits of having a larger reptile. I can't take my Aki outside. There's no way I could get a harness on an Aki, nor would I recommend it. But on a Tegu, I can do that and I can very easily get him to enjoy the outdoors much more than a lot of smaller reptiles. So take advantage of that. Look into harnesses and leashes and do your research because they can really squeeze out of a lot of pet harnesses. So really look into that. Anyway guys, we talked about five things that you should be prepped and ready for before getting your baby adult, whatever age, Tegu. Let me know what you think in a comment below. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, guys, again, please consider subscribing, leave a like, and of course, leave that comment, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.